The Steinhardt Ocean 139 has been one of the most popular sub-homages over the past decade, but this Suga Seaman is slowly gaining popularity as one of the best homages in the current market. They come in at different price points. The Steinhardt is closer to $450, while the Sugas can be had for just under $200. Should you pay that extra money for the Steinhardt, or should you save your money and go with the Sugas instead? I've done in-depth reviews of both these watches, so check out those videos if you want to get a more detailed look at either of them. We're going to use 10 categories for this head-to-head. -head. Some categories are objective, while others are based on my experience. If either watch takes a category, it gets a point. If the category is a tie, both watches get a point. We'll tell you the scores at the end to see which one ends up as the winner. Let's start with the first category, fit and finish. Both these watches have excellent fit and finish for the price, and they're not that far from each other. But I'm going to give this category to Steinhardt, purely because of tactile sensations. It just feels better to handle. The edges are rounded, the crown feels buttery smooth, and that same buttery feeling also extends to the bracelet. The finishing on the Suges is very well done, but it just doesn't have that refined feel when it's in your hand. So this category goes to Steinhardt. Next, we have the crystal. Both have flat sapphire crystals, with AR coating and a date magnifier. But the Suges executes this much better. It uses a clear AR coating and the magnifier actually magnifies the date 2.5 times, making it much easier to read. The Steinhardt on the other hand has a blue AR coating, which sometimes clashes against the black dial. I don't even want to talk about that excuse of a date magnifier. It doesn't magnify the date at all. Suges takes this category and claws back a point. Moving on to the bezel, and here's where it gets a bit tough. The Steinhardt bezel is rock solid with great action, but the white loom pip tends to turn yellow after some time. It's happened to me on two Steinhardts, and I've seen many other examples online. The grip can also be a bit slippery sometimes, so that makes it a bit hard to turn. The Suges on the other hand has quite subpar bezel action. It feels very light and there is some back play to it. But I love how they went with the silvery paint on the bezel markers. It's such a subtle touch that makes the whole watch look much cleaner, and it really puts the focus on the dial. I'm going to call this category a tie. Both watches definitely have room for improvement in the bezel department. Next up, dial, hands and indices. The Steinhardt doesn't have the best looking dial in the world. It's quite basic with a matte black finish, but they executed the basic quite flawlessly. The grainy texture on the dial gives it that little bit of visual interest, while the hands and indices look very well finished. In comparison, the glossy black dial of the Suges looks way more beautiful, but it falls apart once you start looking at the closer details. There are scratches and rough edges on the handset, that can be seen even without a macro lens. Both watches take a point here. The Suges looks better, but the Steinhardt is more cleanly finished. Moving on to the movement. If you watch my review of the Suges, you'll know that the Seiko NH35 movement started losing accuracy and had a bit of an issue with the crown positions. The Swiss Alita SW200 in the Steinhardt kept fantastic time. It also has a higher beat rate, so the second hand sweeps much smoother than the NH35. Even if the Suges movement didn't give me those issues, there could only be one winner in this category. The Steinhardt easily takes a point here with the SW200. Next up is the bracelet and clasp. Both watches have excellent bracelet, so I'm just going to talk about the things I liked and disliked about them. The Steinhardt bracelet is buttery smooth. The links articulate well, and it feels just so dang comfortable on your wrist. The clasp is solid with micro adjustment positions, but I just wish it had a quick adjust function, which is exactly what the Suges has. This makes it very convenient to resize the bracelet and get that perfect fit. I didn't like the male end links on the bracelet of the Suges though. They extend the effective lock to lock to 51 millimeters which is probably the limit of what I can pull off on my wrist. 
There's no clear winner here, so I'll give a point to board watches. Moving on to the next category, the loom. The Suges blows the Steinhardt away in this category. The loom here is much more evenly applied, with more parent layers, and it lasts longer than the Steinhardt, which has really weak loom on the indices. The Suges takes the loom category. Now, the next few categories are more subjective, starting with value. The quality on the Suges is unbelievably good for a watch below $200. But I feel both of these watches represent great value at their price points. I know the Steinhardt is double the price of the Suges, but you're getting a watch with a Swiss movement and better quality control. So that kind of evens things out. I'm going to give both watches a point for value. Next up, wearability. I like the smaller size of the Steinhardt, and the female end links make it fit my wrist better. But it does wear a bit flat due to that lug shape, so it doesn't give you that feeling of hugging your wrist. The Suges makes it easy to get a perfect fit with that quick adjust clasp, but the bracelet taper and bulkier watch head makes it feel just a bit top heavy. It kind of bobbles around sometimes. These are not the most comfortable watches I've worn, so I'm gonna give this round a tie. The last category is peace of mind. I bought the Steinhardt used, and it was over a year old when I got it. I contacted Steinhardt because the loom pip turned yellow, and they asked me to send the watch back to Germany. No questions asked. They covered return shipping, replaced the bezel insert for free, and sent it back to me in less than two weeks. Because of the movement issue on the Suges, I returned it for free under the AliExpress 15-day free return policy. Even with that policy, it took me one and a half months to get my money back. Getting a refund on AliExpress after this free return period is usually quite a hassle, bordering on impossible. If you somehow manage to agree a return with the seller, you have to pay for return shipping and wait for months for the watch to reach China and get your money back. The way Steinhardt dealt with my issue on an older watch without me being the original owner was very impressive. I'm giving a point to Steinhardt for this category. So, which watch came out on top in this head-to-head? -head? For me, this was a very close call, with the Steinhardt taking the top spot. Only just. The Suges would have equaled the points tally if it didn't have that problem with the movement, so the right choice here really depends on what is the best watch for you. If you have a budget below $200, the Suges is a fantastic option. It's definitely a more direct homage compared to the Steinhardt, so that may be a pro or con depending on what exactly you're looking for. Some corners had to be cut to get to this price point, like the QC, but if you're okay with that, those are corners that suggest probably made the right choice cutting. If you can stretch your budget and if you want a piece that feels more refined, the Steinhardt is definitely a fantastic choice. You get a Swiss made watch with excellent finishing and customer service at a sub $500 price point. Because of that, it's easy to see why this brand has gotten so much love from homage watch enthusiasts over the past decade. So over to you, which one of these would you go with? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, I'll catch you next time.